Hello guys, welcome to Deep Codes and in today's video, we will discuss lead code question 1187 that says make array strictly increasing. So guys, although this question is very easy to understand and the question description is very clear, but the question is slightly a uh, tougher level where we have, we have to use our mind and try to derive the different test cases that can be possible in order to build the intuition. So yeah guys, stick to the end and watch the complete video. So here you would be given two array, array 1 and array 2 and you need to perform some operation on array 1 in order to make it strictly increasing okay so what operation you need to perform is you can select any index i from the array 1 and replace that value with any element of the array 2 so what you can do is you can select one array of i and then replace it with any array 2 of j and you need to perform such uh, operation in order to make array 1 strictly increasing okay so in a sorted order you need to sort it in a strictly increasing and you need to return minimum number of such operation to make array 1 uh, strictly increasing okay uh, so yeah here the question suggests us to find the optimal answer that is the minimum number of operation so guys now let's try to look at the examples for better understanding so in the first example here we have array 1 1 5 3 6 7 so you can see that this one then um, this is uh, then it's come 5 so 5 is greater than 1 then comes 3 now this condition is violated here at 3 then for 6 it is okay for 7 it is okay so the condition is violated at 3 so now do uh, do we have any elements between 5 and 6 no there can be can, there, is, there is no possible elements between 5 and 6 that can be inserted here right so what we did here is we replace 5 with 2 then the array becomes something like this 1 2 3 6 7 so guys although the condition of strictly increasing was violated at uh, index 2 that is for the element 3 but we didn't replace this and replace the 5 with a 2 and now the array is strictly increasing in a sorted manner so this is how we solve the first example now in the second example what we did here is see initially we replaced this 5 with uh, 3 and this 3 with 4 so the final array becomes something like this 1 3 4 6 7 and yeah this is uh, sorted and in a strictly increasing order so yeah guys we perform to replace operation here replace with this 4 and this 3 so yeah we return 2 as our answer now in the third example here let's say uh, the, we have 5 now this 3 we need something that is greater than 5 and less than 6 but anything is possible no nothing is possible here so let's try to replace 5 with something so okay so if you replace 5 with 1 then this is not strictly increasing so this can't be done so now first element is 1 now let's try to replace 5 with 3 so if you replace it with 3 it's okay till here but the next element 3 now this 3 is not greater than the previous we need strictly increasing so we again have to replace this then let's say we replace it with 6. So now the array becomes something like this. 1, 3, 6. The next element is 6. Okay. Now this 6 is not um, in the strictly increasing to previous. So we need to replace it with something. But do we have any other option that is greater than 6? No, we don't have any options. So yeah, we return minus 1 here. So whenever we find it is impossible to sort the array in strictly increasing order, we simply return minus 1. So yeah guys, got this clear till here. So you can see that uh, uh, for each element of the array 1, there are some options like we can either replace that element or not to replace. Yeah. So based on the option, we try to find the best op uh, or optimal solution and return uh, the minimum number of operation. Right. So guys, uh, let's take one more example and try to understand how these things can work. So let's say you have array 1 like this 1, 2, 3, 7, 6 and 10. So up till here, it, everything was sorted. Now at this point, the strictly increasing uh, condition of array 1 is violated. So we have to do something, right? Got it? And in the array 2, we have numbers like 14, 15, and 5. So one option is what we can do is we can do 1, 2, 3, 7, then replace this 6 with, let's say, with 14. We replace it with 14. Okay. Now then we also have to replace 10. So let's say we replace it with 15. Now this array is sorted. Okay. How many operations we perform? We operation perform twice. So the answer is 2 here. Okay. Now guys, what one another way we could solve this question? Let's see. 
so we have one two three now uh, let's say we have replaced the seven with five so we have replaced and placed here five then six okay the condition is not satisfied till here then ten is also satisfied so by performing only one replace operation operation at seven means at an uh, index three with a value seven we can get the array array one in a sorted in a strictly increasing sorted manner so guys we have to identify that what is the best approach to solve this question that means we have multiple approaches or multiple choices or you can say options so one option is this that we have did and this is the second option so guys whenever we have multiple option to solve this so to solve the question what we can think of is we can think of recursion right because in recursion what we do is we try to uh, take one of the option and try to find the answer if we don't get we try to take a step back and try to find different answer with a different approach or different choice so this is a typical recursion plus memoization question where we first perform the recursion and then memoize the recursive solution and guys building up the intuition for this type of question is in easy because by the test case that i have shown you that either if we have replaced 6 uh, 6 and then 10 then it would result 2 but if you have replaced 7 then it would result 1 so we have different options or different choices in uh, to replace what element and with what right so yeah whenever we have this type of situation when we where we have to make uh, different choices and choose the most optimal choice then we can perform recursion plus memoization also one thing if you note the constraints for this question is uh, the size of the array both array 1 and array 2 is up to 2000 so this is a very good indication that yeah we can perform n square solution but if this type of equation if you have size of the array up to 10 to the power 5 then you must be clear that we go for n square solution won't work recursion plus memoization won't work and in that case we have to perform some n log n solution so guys uh, observing the different test cases as well as observing the constraint can help us to get the idea uh, to build the intuition okay now let's uh, move ahead in this question so here what was our observation our observation states that if array of i is greater than array of i minus 1 that means the current element this is the current element is greater than previous element so if this is the case then we have two options right we we can replace it or not to replace it okay so uh, if already it is solved then also we can replace it as we have seen here that up till 7 the array was sorted then also if we perform replace operation it was beneficial for us so if in this condition we have two choices we can replace and not to replace and in this condition let's say array of i is less than equal to the previous that means the current is less than equal to previous in this situation we have only one choice that is to replace right to perform replace operation because this will violate the condition of array 1 being strictly increasing so if this is the case then we definitely have to perform the replace operation and yeah based on this two observation uh, we will derive the approach okay but guys wait a minute so this intuition part is very much clear we have choices to perform replace and not to perform replace operation so based on that we uh, can write recursive solution and then memoize it now one question i would like to ask you is whenever you perform a replace operation that is to replace any nums uh, any integer from array 1 with array 2 then what would be the best possible choice of replace so that would be nothing but a smallest number greater than the uh, previous so let's say if you are performing replace on array 1 of 5 so if you want to perform replace operation on this so for that you have to check the value of the previous element and you need to find the smallest number greater than previous inside array 2 of j so we need to find smallest number greater than previous inside array 2 of j okay why so if we don't do this thing what will happen so let's say in the same example above so we have 1 2 3 7 6 and 10 and array 2 has 14 15 and 5 so what if we have replaced this 6 with 15 okay so that then that would result in 1 2 3 7 15 and the last remaining element would be 10 now there is no way possible to replace 10 with any numbers from the array 2 that is greater than 15 yeah so this array can never be sorted okay right so this array if we have replaced the 6 with 15 then the array would never be sorted so this is not the best way to get the answer right so whenever you are performing replace operation 
try to replace it with the element that is uh, greater than previous but it is smallest right so here if you want to replace the 6 with any element then we have option of 14 as well as 15 so we need to choose the element that is greater than the previous but it is smallest so that is 14 so if you have uh, choose here 14 and the array would be something like this 1 2 3 7 14 and for 10 we would have still have the option to replace 10 with 15 so in this case at least we have some result instead of minus 1 so yeah whenever you perform replace operation try to replace it with the smallest number greater than the previous okay things are clear till here now the next thing so if you go and try to search what is the best possible replace number from the array to then you traverse the complete array to then that will result in big of uh, big of m time complexity let's say array to size is m and you need to search this number that is smallest number greater than the previous then that will take big of m time complexity so one thing we can do here is we can sort array to out here because the any indexing whenever we are performing replace operation whatever may be the index of the j uh, array of j array 2 of j it doesn't matter we can perform it with any index number so yeah what we can do is we can sort array 2 of j and then use binary search to find this number which number smallest number greater than the previous so this can be done in big of log of m time complexity if we sort array 2 of j and then we perform binary search so to find array 2 of j that is the best possible candidate for replacement what we can do is we can first sort array 2 of j and then apply binary search binary search or upper bound they both will take big of long in time upper bound will implement binary search internally yeah this is the stl statement and this will use binary search internally so yeah guys combining all these things let's code it okay i know there would be a few more doubts in your mind but we will try to solve them with the help of uh, code only okay so the first step here is uh, let me try this so first step here is to sort the sort array to object then call this answer uh, solve function that will store the answer now inside the solve function think of this uh, this is nothing but a base condition so whenever we have processed all the uh, elements of the array one we will stop and return zero that means by return zero because no more replace operation are required now so yeah we will return zero okay uh, then uh, skip this for right now now we have two choices operation one and operation two so operation one that means uh, make uh, simply consider this is make replace operation so this is our option one and this is not make okay so we have two options right either we make the replace operation or not to make now if we have some condition like this we, if error if i is greater than zero okay and the current element is less than equal to previous element so this is the case where we definitely have to make replace operation if the current element is less than or equal to previous element then we have to make replace operation now how we will make replace operation for that we will choose the smallest number that is greater than the previous so we applied here upper bound so upper bound will find us the smallest number greater than the previous so we uh, perform upper bound from the array 2 of begin up till array 2 of end to find the number that is greater than this array 1 of uh, that is this is nothing but the previous so this is previous element and we say subtract at the beginning so that we get the index okay now if this index lies inside the range of array 2 what we can do is uh, and also it is greater than the previous then we can simply uh, replace it replace array 1 of i with array 2 of j and then uh, perform this recursive call okay why we added one because we already performed one replace operation here so we added one and then call recursive function to get the answer from the remaining array 1 right so uh, pass this i plus 1 and yeah and for further solving i will also replace it with the previous num so whatever number was present in the previous we also we again change that array of i this is like a backtracking step okay so this is one thing now the second thing here is if the number if the current number say current and this is previous the current is already greater than the previous so in this case we have two choices right either to make replace operation or not to make so the first thing we did the same thing here this code is the same that is we are performing the replace operation so the same thing we are finding the upper bound and then perform the replace 
recursively calling the uh, solve function and storing in option one and you are then again changing the value also we have second choice right to us or the second option that is not to perform replace operation so in that case don't add this one don't add this one because we are not performing anything and simply call solve function correct with i plus one and in the third case here both the time we have checked if the i is greater than zero but there might be a case where we have to perform replace at the zeroth index right and just think if you want to make a replace operation at the zeroth index with what element you will uh, replace it you will surely try to replace it with the smallest number right if because we don't have to compare if it is a zeroth index element then that can be the smallest number right so what we would do is we would simply check the zeroth index element of array 1 with a zeroth index element of array 2 array 2 is already sorted so now we don't have to go and find upper bound we have to, we want to make array 1 zeroth index as small as possible so we will choose uh, the smallest element uh, if it is a, if it is already small then we won't perform replace operation as we would perform right so if so this thing remains the same inside this so this if condition remains the same and the second option option we already have that yeah don't perform any operation so simply go and find the answer for i plus one okay and yeah at the end we would return the minimum of both option one and option two choice one and choice two right now guys one thing i forgot here why 2001 why this so if you go and look at the constraint the size of array is array one size is uh, is less than equal to 2000 okay so the maximum replace operation you can perform is 2000 because the size of array one is itself 2000 then you won't perform more uh replace operation than this number so yeah we have to re return some int max right in order to handle the situation when we when the strictly increasing array is not possible so if you have seen this in the third example so here strictly increasing array was not possible in order to handle this case what we did is we simply return some maximum number that will state that yeah it is not possible see instead of this if you return minus one then perform this mean operation then minus one would be minimum but in our case minus one means answer is not possible so we have handled it in this way that instead of minus one we took some maximum number and if the answer is greater than 2000 okay, that greater than the size of the array maximum size of the array we can have in the input then in that case simply return minus one as the answer okay got it clear till here now now come this question that how we can perform memorization if you do until recursion then it will surely give you time limit exceeded now guys in order to perform memorization we have to find what are the changing variables or changing state of our recursion tree so if you took, take a look at this function called the parameters so one is uh, one parameter that is i or the index of the array one we know yeah it is it is changing but one another thing is changing is array one the values of the different indexes of the array one is changing because whenever we perform triplets operation array one values change right so these two things are changing now our our now one thing more to note here is let's say you are checking for any current element you only check uh, this current element if it's greater than equal to or less than based on the previous element that means you only perform comparison of the ith element with the previous element right so guys what we we would do is we would store two things one this index that is changing and second to keep track of the current state of array one we would store the previous element because on the previous element only we are making some changes making the replace operation to handle so whenever if whenever you see this i minus one i minus one they both are previous element so yeah we would store two things one is the index i and second is the previous element okay so we took a map a pair of map uh, a map with a pair as a key and int as a value so in this pair we would store the i as well as the value of the previous element now if i is zero then we will simply take minus one as the value of the previous element, right? If i is a zero, then there is no previous element. So yeah, that's why. And here also we uh, store um, or memorize it the answer in the same way. That is the i as well as the with previous element. And yeah, and here to perform to reduce the number of sub problems, we perform this memorization step where we find that whether we have actually calculated the answer for the current step in some previously, right? So if we have calculated the answer previously for the current state, then we simply return the answer. Okay. 
so i hope you guys uh, have now somewhat understanding of what we are trying to do in the code if you guys have still any doubts then do try to write the code by yourself you try to make different test cases by yourself so that you can get better understanding okay not talking about the complexities so here the complexity uh, let's talk about the time complexity first so for one is let's say sort so for an example let's say the size of array one is m size of array two is m now the sort function will take m log of m time complexity in the first case then we are calling the solve function okay now guys talking about the time complexity for the solve function so let's say the size of array one is n and size of array two is m now here what we are storing is inside the map we are storing the index i as well as the previous element so let's say so time complexity till now was m log of m based on this sort now adding uh, how many different values pos are possible for i so that is m different uh, not m it's n different uh, possible values okay so n multiplied how many different values possible for the previous so we are storing a previous element right how many different values possible for the previous m different values are possible because the previous element can be replaced by m different elements of, of the array two. so for each index m different possible values are there for the previous element so this many number of states are possible in our recursion tree also for each time for each state what we are doing we are trying to find the upper bound and it will take log of m time complexity so this upper bound will take log of m time complexity so this is our overall time complexity for the solution and talking about the space complexity space complexity is also the same as this this is our space complexity right plus some recursive stack will be occupied right so yeah guys that's all for this video if you guys have still any doubts then do let me know in the comment section make sure you like this video and subscribe to our channel thank you